So who's responsible for the pool and investment property? Is it the tenant or is it the owner? Here you're going to find out. Hi everyone, this is Scott McKenzie from Brisbane Property Channel and McKenzie Wood Property, smoothing your way to investment property success. Lucky Brisbane basks in balmy swimming pool weather nine months of the year. So an attractive pool at a rental property can be a huge draw and help secure great tenants quicker for more. But who's responsible for care and maintenance of the pool? Landlord or tenant? Well, let's be clear. What we're talking about here is a non-shared pool at a freehold property. Not a shared pool that's part of a body corporate because they usually undertake the care and maintenance of those pools. First, let's look at the pool safety certificate. This is the document that must be obtained before entering into a tenancy agreement. It's issued by a pool safety inspector if they determine that the pool is compliant with current regulations. There is no set fee for a, soap, for a pool safety certificate, so it's worth shopping around. The pool safety certificate for a non-shared pool is valid for two years, as opposed to one year for a shared pool. If you're using a property manager, they should be asking for your pool safety certificate as part of their sign-up procedure. At Mackenzie Wood Property, we store and monitor the safety certificates for all properties under management with pools to ensure they're renewed on time. Okay, let's look at registration now. Related to the pool safety regulations is the pool registration system. All residential pools in Queensland must be registered with the QVCC, the Queensland Building and Construction Commission. There's no cost to register your pool and you can do it on the QVCC website. Failure to register can result in a fine. You can check your own pool's registration status at the URL below. Now, let's look at who's responsible for proper care and maintenance of the pool during the tenancy. Pools come with quite a burden of day-to-day -day maintenance to ensure they remain crystal clear, chemically balanced and sanitary for their users. Maintenance tasks will vary depending on the type of pool and the associated equipment and the tenancy agreement should be clear on who is responsible for what. But even before the tenancy starts, there are some responsibilities the owner must undertake to make sure the pool is handed over in the right condition to the tenant. First, the owner must ensure the pool is, is clean and chemically balanced. At Mackenzie Wood, we evidence this by taking a sample from the pool on the day the tenancy starts to a local pool shop. They test the sample and sign off on it being chemically balanced. We staple their findings to the entry condition report, which is signed by the property manager and given to the tenant to review, sign and return to the property manager within three days. Second, the same entry condition report should also confirm the pool is clean, working and undamaged. And third, the property owner must also provide the necessary equipment for the day-to-day -day maintenance of the swimming pool, including things like a vacuum, hoses, brushes and scoops. The responsibility for ongoing care, the regular vacuuming, cleaning the skimmer box and filter, chemical treatment, backwashing and so on, should be clearly defined in the tenancy agreement, so both the owner and the tenant understand their responsibilities prior to signing the legally binding document. The owner should think about this before they market the property. Obviously, transferring the obligations to the tenant will save money, but arranging for a third party to do the maintenance will be valued by the tenant and so make the property more desirable. Plus, the owner then knows that the pool is being properly cared for. As is so often the case in renting, market supply and demand dynamics will have a bearing on what the owner can demand and what they have to pay for. Okay, now let's look at the tenancy agreement. Although standard condition 26 of the Queensland RTA Form 18A General Tenancy Agreement provides that the tenant must keep clean the premises having regard to the condition at the start of the tenancy, and this presumably includes the swimming pool, it is sensible to add a special condition clearly stating this, or stating that the owner will maintain the pool if that's to be the case. The REIQ's Special Condition 46 clearly places the pool maintenance obligations on the tenant. At Mackenzie Wood, we add further special conditions, which expand further on Special Condition 46 responsibilities and the tenant's obligation to supply and pay for the necessary, necessary chemicals. Our special conditions also make clear the tenant's duty to comply with pool safety legislation. Finally, a couple of practical matters. First, as a convenience for the tenant and to avoid unintended neglect of the pool, 
The owner or property manager should provide written instructions to the tenant for maintenance of the pool. And second, should the tenant choose to enter into a third party maintenance agreement to carry out the maintenance and cleaning of the pool, the owner can dictate who that third party should be. Hopefully this information on pool maintenance responsibilities for Brisbane rental properties has been useful for you. If you have any questions, please contact us through our website at mcwoo.com.au that's mcwu.com.au or call us on 07 1200. This has been Scott McKenzie from McKenzie Wood Property wishing you great investing success.